Our webinar today is entitled Fundamentals of Engineering Change Record in SAP PLM 7002. This webinar will discuss and demonstrate the basic capabilities of engineering change record in SAP PLM 702. SAP has enhanced their PLM solution through the addition of market-leading features and benefits around managing engineering changes. These include using the change record to manage all of your suggested changes from any PLM object, using any easy-to-build workflow to control the routing of your record for the review and approval, use status and release management to configure the ECR to your business process needs, and using flexible continuous modeling right from an early stage to manufacturing handover. My name is Alan Mendel, Vice President at LeverX, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. In our topic for today's webinar, let me brief, briefly introduce you to LeverX. LeverX assists companies increase business value by leveraging existing investments in SAP solutions. LeverX is an SAP services partner, an SAP VAR, and an associate member of the DLM Alliance. LeverX delivers strategic functional technical services in the areas of SAP product lifecycle management, portfolio and project management, and related solutions. We are also able to provide you a complete solution of software and services from SAP. LeverX offers services for business process and strategic consulting, solution architecture development, implementation planning and execution, and application management support, and do so both through on-site and remote delivery models. In addition, LeverX provides services for SAP mobile application development and strategy, as well as a broad set of te SAP technologies, including SAP NetWeaver, Workflow, Business Warehouse, and Business Objects. We are pleased to introduce our presenter for today's webinar, David Cramp, Senior Solutions Engineer from LeverX. Dave has recently joined us from the pre-sales team at SAP PLM organization, and we're very happy to have him part of the team. Our presentation for today will start with an overview of engineering change record in SAP PLM 702, and it'll be followed by a demonstration of engineering change record. We'll then open the webinar for questions. Should you have questions for, our, for David or, my, or myself, please use the GoToWebinar question panel box and type in your questions. At the end of this presentation, we will try to address as many questions as possible. Dave, with that, why don't I give the presentation over to you? And please go ahead when you're ready, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dave Cramp. I'm, uh, as Alan said, a uh, solution engineer for, for LeverX, and I'm uh, your host today to discuss the engineering change record capabilities that SAP has, has rolled out um, since the time frame of the 7.01 uh, module. Um, so this has been out for, for, for a while, and it's been enhanced a little bit with 702. And we're going to discuss some of the functionalities that we have in here and uh, how you can use this tool. So what we have in here is, you know, the fundamentals. So how can you use an ECR to manage your changes? You know, how can you request changes? What are the different ways you can do that? What are some of the functionality that the tool will provide you that help you work with uh, ch the change control, or your change of the uh, request process? We're going to see that it's been made very, very flexible uh, with this newest release to give you uh, the, the end customer greater uh, functionality and modeling your business process into this change of, change of record process. Um, you're also going to see how you can document your change requests with different tools you can use to uh, add in supporting information, costing, et cetera, for your change. Um, we'll just talk, talk to you about how you can model your workflow into the change record so you can flow your, your work through to the appropriate people that need to review and approve your, your changes. Um, then also, you know, how, how do you want you to have, you know, a request made? How does it flow through? Where, where is it going to land? You know, how do you work with the system to work with your changes? How are you notified? And then how do you work with your, your change? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about status and release management. 
And this is really, to me, very exciting uh, capabilities that SAP has built into their tool that, that can help you manage your process uh, via rules that you will define in the process. And we'll get into this a little more in a, in a few slides. And then, once again, you know, how, how do you work flow out your change record and, and additional possibilities? We're going to talk to you, what, 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 what can you do at the end of this process when you release a record? Okay. Here's kind of a, a little flow process that uh, we're going to go through here. And you're going to see uh, the creation of an ECR, you know, creation of an engineering change request by the production manager. We're then going to do and add in some suggested changes, initiate the workflow, uh, pretty much as the uh, production manager. So we're going to do a couple, couple things there. So we're going to start with from scratch. Nothing's going to be in the system. I'm going to create an ECR from scratch, show you how you will go through the process of defining your ECR, adding in the objects you, you are suggesting to change, defining a workflow, putting in some supporting documentation, et cetera, that can be used to process this workflow. Uh, and then, so then in that fourth step will be the process of workflow. We're going to see it flow to some various roles. And then, you know, finally, uh, time permitting, we'll, we'll finish off with a release. But we'll, we'll go through a number of steps here to work on our overall process. So let me open this up here and go over to my ECR, uh, my NetWeaver Business Client screen. So here you can see I'm logged in as uh, the production manager. So I'm, I'm, I'm logged in as a certain user. On my left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to come down to my engineering records, create engineering change record. So I'm going to click on that. I am going to select change record with date effectivity. I'm going to create a new change. Oops. Okay. And put in a description, revise nav unit. Fix overheating issue. Overheating. Uh, what is the reason for the change? Technical issue, when do we want to cut, who is going to be the change coordinator, the change coordinator, what is our target date, and we'll call it next week. Okay. So here's, you know, some straightforward, you know, over it. Uh, you know, some metadata. You can also, if you have one that's very similar to another change, you can copy and create from a, a previously created one. So now we're going to create the engineering change record. So here we have priority we can drop in here. We'll call this high. Uh, here you can see our status is 10, change uh, inquiry initial, change order date cramp. You know, in context is filled out, so down on the items field. In this example, we're just going to say, hey, we want to make a change to uh, uh, add in a new uh, nav unit. And we're going to call this nav unit NAVO21 document, document type, and some other information we want for the system. We're going to say that. This is going to be in a, a, a creation mode for change relevance. So this is the part of the tool that will reflect to the system, hey, is this part out there or not? What do I need to do? It? So this is kind of the tool that you can use that will flag for the system. I'm, I'm creating this part from scratch or not. So that, that's that uh, creation re relevance there. Uh, I'm going to come over to notes. Here's where I can add in some change information. So 
we just put in, you know, some a, a, co a company detail here. So I confirm my entry. Please revise NAV unit. Place the main board, which is causing an overheat condition for Labrex Engineering. So here you can see that the prod manager is date, time, snap, his notes. So this is where you can capture the ongoing note trail of information that you're working on with this change process. I'm also going to add in a, uh, a document as a reference document. We're going to see what that means in a, in a second. But I'm going to say, hey, here's a reference document that has some information on it. So people in my workflow that are going to be reviewing and approving this can go look at that information. Or okay, so I've just linked a document here, so you can see that the link document is showing up here. So let's go back to the process route area now. And here's where, if I needed to, I can build a workflow. You see the add parallel and add sequential task. So it's very straightforward how you can build it. Or you can reuse a, uh, a process route. What we're going to do is going to load. Uh, so a couple of things while we're here. Save process route as template. So if you create one, you want to use it as a template. There's your, there's your, there's your capability of doing that to find and reuse and build your governance control process in there. And then process route log. Who's touching this change? When have they touched it? When have they seen it? You know, that workflow log that is all, all important. All important. So a little process route. I know my process route number here. I'm just going to load my process route in. So my process route. So when I hit this OK, you're going to see the, the workflow populate down here in the lower screen. So here in the lower screen, you can see the workflow and all the people. So we're logged in, as you saw, as a production manager. This is going to go to the design manager, then the engineering designer, then back to the design manager, and then back to the product manager for the, for the overall course of approval. So I'm going to save. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to say, we need to go to change request and process. So first part is filling out the germane information that's going to be associated to this change. Put in the objects that need to be changed is what we did here. Define the workflow, put in some notes, tied into some company documentation, and now change your question process. So let me save that. I'm just going to pop this to read only. And you can see here now an icon, a status icon, work item has been sent. So the design manager is going to have a workflow in his inbox. Okay, so I can I can also if I'm going to work with this again, add to favorites. So in that work center viewer, we saw the workflow. You have the capability of also creating uh, your favorite objects here. So I could refresh that, we'd see that there. So what we're going to do is log off as the production manager. We've come in and we added some suggested changes. We've created, created the ECR. We've added in some suggested changes. And we've initiated the workflow. We're now going to the process of the workflow uh, through the uh, various roles that we've defined in that process route that we saw tied to the engineering change record. 